OK, so uh, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion uh, of chapter 17, first part. OK, and in the previous lectures, we tell you how to define the oxidation numbers of the atoms in a redox reaction and telling you how to actually using the uh, four steps to uh, finalize the uh, coefficients for a balanced redox reaction. What we are going to do today is actually we're going to focus more on the electrochemical cells and then also the equilibrium constant. Okay, so let's start from the electrochemical cells. So in chapter 17, we introduced something called the electrochemical cells. But most of the time you're going to see this word the galvanic cell or the voltaic cell uh, in your questions. Okay, what I mean is actually it means actually the Electrochemical cell you put together it is a cell that can actually spontaneously generate the electrons for you to use. Okay, and then for this type of cells, the very unique feature that you're going to see a lot is actually this. Okay, so if you compute the electro potential, uh, the potential of the your electrochemical cells, the value will always always be positive. Okay for your galvanic cell or the voltaic cell. Okay, so if you have galvanic cell, then you know your E not cell or E cell will be positive. Okay, the same thing is actually for your voltaic cell. Okay, so let's actually the things that we first need to know. Okay, if you have a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell, your E cell will always, always be positive. Okay. And E cell, the things by itself, is actually a intensive property. Okay, meaning it doesn't really uh, change if you change your equations. Okay, so if you have a pair of your uh, reductant uh, and also the oxidant. Okay, so when they form the electrochemical cell, the potential of the electrochemical cell will be already be determined. It doesn't affect by the coefficient or anything else. All right. And then the next thing is actually, how do you actually calculate the E cell if today you obtain the uh, reduction potential of each, uh, both electrodes? Okay, so in order to have an electrochemical cell, uh, we're going to talk about what is the basic elements that you need to have, okay? But most importantly is that you will actually have the electro, you are going to have the potentials for your castle and potentials of your anode. Okay, the potential of your castle, okay, will be the standard reduction potential. Okay, and for your anode, since you have oxidation reaction to occur, therefore the electro potential to use is actually the oxidation potential. Okay, in your textbook, there will be actually a lot of table, and all those table will actually give you the value of your reduction potential. Okay, and typically you will have something look like this. Okay, you have let's say a uh, element X with certain charges, and then if you got some electrons, okay, which means the X two plus is actually getting reduced. Okay, it's going to form let's say X. Okay, so this thing's overall is actually a reduction reaction. Okay, and then the energy potential associated with that is actually called the standard reduction potential. Typically, you're going to see this E not as such a typical representation. Okay, but here, in order to calculate your E cell, you also need, have, need to have the E not oxidation, right? So how do you get that E not oxidation since you don't have the oxidation potential tables in your textbook? Okay, so what you do is actually you're going to flip the things. Okay, so once you flip it, you're going to have X. It's going to become X two plus plus two electrons, right? So in this case, your oxidation number of your X actually increased by two, right? So this is actually an oxidation reaction. Okay, so by doing that, you're actually defining your oxidation potential. And then, since we just simply flip the reactions, right? Therefore, you actually equivalent to your reduction potential, but with a negative sign with it. Okay, 
So this is actually a very important concept that you should know. We can actually calculate your E naught oxidation through negative E naught reduction. Okay, so we're going to do some practice today to actually tell you how to actually do the things. Okay, the next thing that we should know is that if today you have a substance with a larger E naught, meaning actually it like to obtain the electron more than others, okay, and this specific property will make this species a stronger oxidant, okay. So if you flip the concept, right, if today you have a very small E naught, okay, means actually it doesn't really like electrons, okay. And that fact will actually mean in electric actually give out the electron, which make it a stronger reductant. Okay. So this actually is something that's actually very important uh, conceptually. Okay. So with all the all the things being said, let's discuss okay, the cell notation. Okay, if today you have electrochemical cell, what should you actually expect? Okay, so typical the typical structure of your electrochemical cells first contains. something like this. Okay, you're going to have two solution. And then between the two solution, you actually connect them with something called a soul bridge. Okay, so this is actually your solution. Solution one, and then solution two, okay? And these solutions cannot be just a simple solution. It has to be an electrolyzed solution meaning the electron can actually fully diffuse inside your solution phase, okay? And then besides your electrolyte, okay, let's let me write it down. Okay. So once you have the electrolyte, then you're going to have your electrode. Okay, so you're going to have electrode on both sides, typically. Okay, and then these two electrodes, will be connect with a electric wire and then in between you have a voltmeter. Okay, so that is actually the typical structure you're going to see for a electrochemical cell. Okay. So let's say if this electro is undergo a oxidation reaction. Okay, then we're going to define this is actually our anode. Okay, and then the reason, the, the way we memorize all these things, again, go back to our famous notation, okay, LoRa, right? So the lost electron get, species get oxidized, so first a stronger reactant, and it can also always happen at the anode, right? And then the anode, typically, you're going to have a negative sign, okay? To represent that's actually your anode okay if you have a castle then you have positive sign to represent that okay so the electrons okay you really need to actually know how the electrons should flow in your um in your electrochemical cell okay so it flow from the anodes go to the voltmeters and then go to your castle okay your castle is going to catch or receive the electron so that it can undergo a reduction reaction, right? So let's actually our gain electrons, okay? G rock, right? Okay, so this is actually the basic structures that you should know, okay? The things in between this so called the salt bridge, okay? So once the electron goes in, okay, and then Since this uh, is going to consume many of the K ion, right? So inside your solution, the K ions will actually move to your castle. The N ions will actually move to your anode. Okay. So these are the basic structure of the electrochemical cells. 
And then one of the very important things is that you want to actually know how to write the sale notation. Okay, so to write a sale notation, this is actually a typical format. Okay, so we start from the anode, connect with the sole bridge. Okay, and then write out your castle. In your anode, then we use this line, okay, to separate your reactant and the product, okay. So this actually the reactant of your anode becoming the product of your anode, okay. So let's actually find to write for your anode part, okay. Similarly, you write the reactant of your castle. Separate by this simple line and then write out the product of your cathode. Okay, so this is actually the basic structure of the electrochemical cell notation. Okay, here you should see that the things that you have over layer can exist in the solid form. Okay, so uh, in this case, you can use length as an electrode. However, if the species that you have like undergo your reduction or oxidation, it is not a solid, meaning you won't be able to actually form this electrode directly. Okay, so in that case, you are going to use uh, some other electrodes that is actually uh, commonly used okay, in our uh, chemical society is like the platinum and the carbon. Okay, So this tool can also be used as uh, electrodes so that you can actually use in the same chem electrochemical cell structures to uh, perform some redox reaction. Okay, So for example, if today I want to have my Laura, okay, so if in my anode I want to have my iodide becoming I2, okay, so this is actually an oxidation reaction, right? And then uh, in my castle, okay, which is my G-Rock, if I want to have my bromine that become Br minus, okay, so in this case, okay, all the things, okay, especially your bromine, it is actually not in the solid form, okay. So you won't be able just to just to write a simple cell notation like this, okay. Instead, what you need to write is actually I want to use the platinum as my electrode, okay. And then I'm going to specify my reactant for my anode will be I minus, the product will be I two. Okay, and then put in the soap bridge, then I can start to write my uh, castle, right? So in my castle, okay, my reactant is actually my Br2, product is actually Br minus. Okay, I can also use the platinum as a uh, electrode to make these things happen. Okay, so if that is the case, then this will be the cell notation that you need to write. Okay. The other case is actually if today the things that you have uh, is in the gas form, for example, the H2, okay? Let's say in your, in your LoRa, okay? Now what you have is actually H2 as your rectum and then become H plus, okay? So H2 is actually in the gas form, right? So you won't be able to serve as electro by itself. So typically we're going to write actually platinum H2 and then H plus and then salt bridge and then whatever reaction you want to have in your castle. Okay, so those are the things that we need to actually get familiar with for today's lecture. Okay, so you also need to be very familiar with the structure of the galvanic cell or the voltaic cell and really need to know the electron is actually flowing from your anode to your castle to this electrical wire, okay? So that's pretty much the things that you need to know for the galvanic cell, okay? So let's do some uh, questions so that you can actually know how to apply all these concepts, okay?
OK. Question number A. OK, determine the cell potential of the following reaction using the given standard reduction potential. OK, so this is actually reactions that you are going to have. OK, and then it tells you the reduction potential of titanium 2 plus is this value. And then reduction potential of your nickel 2 plus is this value. OK, and then assuming X is titanium and then specify what is y z s and t okay so this is actually the first question that we have okay so in order to answer this question first you need to know Okay. You need to actually first know who is actually your cathode, who is actually your anode, right? So let's rewrite this equation. Okay, so the oxidation number of Ni2 plus, meaning this is actually a plus two, this oxidation number is zero. This is zero and this is plus two. Okay, so the nickel is actually going from plus two to zero, right? So the oxidation number decrease. So this is actually your G rock. Okay. Titanium is actually your lower. Okay, so this is actually the first things that you know. Okay, so we can write our lower is Ti becoming ti2 plus okay and then the g rock will be your ni2 plus becoming your ni okay so apparently for your nickel okay so this is actually what you expect to have right so this is actually a reduction process therefore you can actually know your reduction potential is going to equals to. So this was actually provided inside the question, right? So your reduction potential is negative 0.23 volts. Okay. And then for your LoRa, right? So this is the basis. You can see this apparently if you want to actually balance it, it is actually an oxidation reactions, right? So you want to actually know what is actually the oxidation potential of the re of these reactions, right? So what we do is actually we calculate the E naught oxidation. It's going to equal to the negative E naught reduction, right? So the reduction potential of this reaction is negative one point. Six three, right? So once you flip it, then you can know your oxidation potential will be positive one point six three volts. Okay, so you know uh, after this simple analysis, okay, these are the reduction and the oxidation potential all together, right? So if you write out your cell notation, okay. So if you write out your cell notation. Okay, so in your in your anode, okay, so anode the reactant is actually titanium, right? Product is actually titanium two plus. Okay, in your castle reactant is actually Ni two plus. The product is actually Ni solid, right? So this will be actually your cell notation, and then your Cell potential will simply equals to the oxidation potential plus the reduction potential. Okay, oxidation potential of your anode, reduction potentials of your castle. Okay, so in this case, you know you will be 1.63 plus negative 0.23. Therefore, the cell potential will be 
1.4 volt. Okay, so this actually we call it E cell. Okay, the cell potential will be 1.4 volt. Okay, so once we know this, then we know the X apparently is actually titanium, right? So titanium is actually your uh, the one that actually undergo oxidation reactions, right? So your X, okay, we know it's titanium. Therefore, we know X is actually your anode. Okay, so once you know X is your anode, then you know the T will be actually your castle. Okay. And in this case, since you are uh, in the castle, right, you have the nickel solid, right? So it means actually you can use your nickel solid as your electrode. Okay. Okay. So once we know these things, then we know the Z okay, is the soul bridge in your electrochemical cells, right? And then your Y and S is simply your electrolyte. Okay. And then one more thing we can add is actually the electron is going to flow from your anode, okay, through the electrical wire into your castle. Okay. So those are the important informations that you will need to know for the question number eight. All right, let's look at question number nine. Okay. Considering the following half reactions, which of this is strongest reducing agent? Okay, so strongest reducing agent means actually it doesn't like electrons okay so if you have a very large reduction potential okay for example if you look at these three reactions right so if you have a larger reduction potential that means actually the species okay like gaining electrons okay which are the three, right? So the larger the reduction potential, let me say actually they like the electron the most. Okay, so in this case, you know, the AU plus like the electrons the most. Okay, so if you put it into order, it will be AU plus like the electron more than N2O, like the electron more than Cr3 plus. Okay. If you like the electron so much, then you won't be able to give out the electron to reduce uh, your interacting partner. Okay. So you know, in this case, the AU plus will be actually the weakest reducing agent. Okay. So so you know this will be the weakest. Okay. Okay. So, but if you actually but here I want to actually know who will be actually strongest, right? Right. So let me say actually the reverse one. Okay. If you flip all these directions, we are going to have AU that becoming AU plus plus electron. Then you will E not oxidation is going to equal to negative 1.69 okay and then your n2 plus h2o liquid they can also give out the electron and they make it become n2o plus 2h plus and then two electrons okay so if that is the case then the e not oxidation it's going to give you a value of negative 1.77. Oh, so this one is actually even larger. Okay, so the order should be N2O larger of your AU than your CR3 plus. Okay, and the third one is 
CR solid, they give you CR three plus plus three electrons. Okay, so in this case, your E naught oxidation will become positive 0 0.74 volt. Okay, so this actually tells you who is actually the one they like to give out the electron the most. Okay, so you can see for AU, N2, and CR, okay, only CR you have a positive uh, oxidation potential, meaning if you actually see something actually positive, that means actually it is like to do this, okay, so you like to give out electrons. And then for your AU and the N2, right, you can see the N2 actually give you the largest negative numbers, right, that means actually he is actually the one that is least likely to give out the electron to reduce uh, its interacting partner. Okay, so with this simple analysis, then we will know the CR solid is the strongest reducing agent. Okay. All right, so this is actually kind of like the simple concept that uh, we want to get familiar with. All right. So the next thing that we want to discuss is actually we actually go to the other hangout so we can actually look at those uh, uh, questions. Okay. So the things we want to discuss. Okay, with, together with that uh, galvanic cell and the voltaic cell is that. Um, remember in the chapter 16, we're trying to connect the delta G into the equilibrium constant K. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here uh, to connect the E cell to the equilibrium constant K. Okay, so back to that time in chapter 16, what we have learned is that we know how to actually connect your delta G into your uh, equivalent constant K. Okay, so the equation that we have learned back to layer is we know that delta G naught can be represented as negative RT natural log K. Okay, and then we also know that delta G can be written as delta G naught plus RT natural log Q. Okay, so these are the two things that we have done in the past, and we're going to apply very similar concept in your E cell. Okay, so the origin that we can do that is because that the delta G naught can also be connected with your E cell. Okay, and the way they connect with each other is actually delta G naught equals to negative n times a constant, the Faraday constant times your E naught cell. Okay, so E naught cell is just the electrochemical potential of your electrochemical cells under the standard condition. Okay, so in other words, your E naught cell is going to simply equal to the delta G naught divided by N times F with a negative sign. Okay, so this is actually the fundamental relationship between your E cell and the delta G. Okay, so since we know that it's the case, right, so we can actually combine these two relationships. Okay, so that you know your delta E naught cell will equal to this, okay, negative. Okay, delta G naught is negative RT natural log k, k divided by your nf, k. So these things can be written as <laughs> positive, positive, uh, negative, negative, make it become positive, right? So if I pull out my n here, okay, and then put all the other thing together, rt over f, okay, then I can rewrite everything like this, okay. Okay, so if under a standard condition, then this thing is actually a constant. Okay, so in the if you calculate all those constants, it gives you a value of 
0.025693 times your natural log k. Okay, so it means actually your E not cell can be represented by this simple equation. Okay, and this actual equation is that I suggest that you to memorize. Okay, so this actual equation that allow us to connect your E not cell to the equivalent constant k under a standard condition. Okay, so the N here is actually unique to your electrochemical cell because this actually represent the number of electrons that are transferred between your uh, LoRa and the GROC. Okay, so we're going to do some practice to figure out how to uh, to teach you how to get figure out like N. Okay, so this is actually how you can actually get the first equation. Okay, so this two is actually quite similar because they connect both connect to the equilibrium constant k. Okay, so one is actually delta g naught equals to negative RT natural log k. And here we're talking about if you have an electrochemical cell potential, E not cell, then you can actually connect to your equilibrium constant k by multiplying these coefficients. Okay, so similarly, you also want to actually connect your E cell to the uh, your chemical quotient Q, right? So very similarly, okay, we're going to replace this one. Okay, so again, using the concept that the delta G is equal to negative NF times your E cell. Okay, so we're going to use this very similar things, okay? So if you do that, okay, so we're going to divide your delta G with negative NF. Okay, on both sides. So you have this will be your delta G not divided by negative NF. Okay, plus RT natural log Q. I want to divide it by negative NF, right? So if I put the negative sign, then this becomes minus. Okay, and then this turns, okay, delta G divided by. Uh, negative NF, okay, this will actually give you the E cell, okay, this term will give you the E not cell, okay, and then the third term will give you negative 1 over N RT over F times your natural log Q, okay, and under a standard condition, this term again is a constant, right? And equals to 0 0.025693. Therefore, we can rewrite all the thing as E cell is equals to your E not cell minus one over N times 0 0.025693 times your natural log Q. Okay, so this is actually the other equations that we need to use to compute the relationship between your E cell and then the chemical quotient Q, okay? And then for a spontaneous reaction, we know, okay, the delta G need to be negative, right? But because your E cell was defined as delta G divided by negative NF, okay? Because of that negative side, that means actually if you have a spontaneous reaction, your E cell has to be positive, okay? So remember, we have the galvanic cell or voltaic cell, right? So the one unique feature to that is that its E cell is always positive. That means actually the chemical reactions, once you plant together, you will happen spontaneously and generate the electron accordingly. Okay, so those are the very important concepts for, for this part. Okay, so let's do some practice so that we can actually understand those concepts better. So let's look at this. Question number one, a voltaic cell. Okay, so voltaic cell, every time you see voltaic, okay, that is actually the key words, right? Because you know, if that is the case, then your E cell has to be positive, okay? And then you say, these cells contains two half cell reactions. 
Okay, one is PB PB two plus. Okay, so this they did not use a straight line to repeat to separate the spe two species, right? It actually used this to separate two species. Okay, what it means it, it doesn't actually specify out who is actually who is actually the reactant, who is actually the product. Okay, it just tells you, okay, you have these two to form a half reaction. Okay, and the other two to form the other half reaction. Okay, and it's going to tell you the reduction potential for the SN2 plus is a value, PB2 plus is another value. Okay, and then it asks you what is the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees C, right? So it's asking you what is your equilibrium constant K. Okay, in this case, right? So we know we can actually compute the equilibrium constant K using your E not cell, right? So the equation we just discussed previously is this one, right? Your E not cell is one over N times 0 0.025693 times ln K, right? So apparently, you know, if just talking about the K, then you're going to use less specific equation, right? 25693 times natural log k. Okay, so the k is actually what you're looking for. Okay, so therefore you need to actually figure out all the other unknowns. Okay, first you need to figure out what is actually E not cell and what is actually the electron that trans transfers between your LoRa and the GRAC, right? So how do you know who is actually <clears throat> your LoRa, who is actually your GRAC? Okay, let's come back to this simple concept. Okay, you have a voltaic cell, means actually your E cell has to be positive. Okay, so right now I have two species and then you have their reduction potential. Okay, you need to flip one, so that you know one is actually undergo oxidation, the other one undergo a reduction. Okay, and once you flip that one, okay, you know you're going to change the sign okay, of the potential, right? So I can get the oxidation potential. To calculate the E cell, basically you just add up the oxidation potential and the reduction potential. For a voltaic cell, the very important thing is actually once you're adding up, it has to be positive, right? So to fulfill that, the only thing you can do is that you need to actually flip your SN2 plus. Okay, so that you got the oxidation potential that is actually 0.14, which will be outweighting the reduction potential of negative 0.13. Therefore, you have a, a positive E cell, so that you have a voltaic cell, right? And then once you have that, then you can actually use in this equation to compute your uh, uh, equilibrium constant k. Okay, so with that being said, then we know for your LoRa, okay, it has to be this, right? You need to flip that, right? So let me actually you should start from the reduced form, okay, and then become SN2 plus plus two electrons. And then here you have a E NUG oxidation will equals to 0.14 volt. Okay. For your GROC, okay, then it will be simply equals to PB2 plus gaining two electrons that become PB. So here you have the, your standard reduction potential, which is negative 0.13 volt. Okay. So once you write these two and then blend together, you are going to have SM plus PB2 plus two electrons, two electrons will cancel out. Then you're going to have your SN2 plus and then PB solid as your product. Okay. And then your E not cell was simply equals to your E not oxidation plus your E not reduction, which equals to 0.14 plus negative 0.13. Okay, so that you know your E not cell is going to equals to 0.01 volt. 
Okay, so since your E sale right now is actually positive, therefore it's going to fulfill the requirement for your Voltex sale. Okay, so once you know these things, the next thing is actually uh, to compute your equilibrium constant K, right? So we want to use the equation, okay? So your E naught sale is going to equal to one over N times 0 .00, 0 0.025693 times your natural log k. Okay, so your E cell now is actually 0 0.01. Number of electrons that got transferred between the two half reaction is actually two electrons, right? Therefore, you know it's actually one over two times 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 .00 Two five six nine three times your nature log k. Okay, so by doing these calculations, okay, your nature log k is going to simply equals to 0 0.01. Okay, times two divided by 0 0.025693. Okay, and then the k will simply equals to exponential of this whole turn, right? So once you do like calculations, then you know your case is going to have a value of 3.4 times 10 to the negative one. Okay, so this is actually how you get your K values from this simple calculation. All right, so this is actually how you solve your question number one. Okay, so question number two, A voltage cell. So again, okay, it's a voltage cell, right? It consists of two half reactions. Okay, and then it gives you the concentration of F2 plus, F3 plus, and AO3 plus. And then the reduction potential for AO3 plus is this, F3 plus is that. Okay. You want you to calculate what is actually your E cell. Okay, so this is actually a, a interesting question. Okay, so let's write down the information that we know here. Okay, so first thing is that you're going to have a vortex cell, right? So you have a vortex cell. Therefore, you know your E naught cell has to be positive, okay? And then the things that you have is actually, you have a reaction. First is actually AL is going to become AL3 plus, plus three electrons. Okay, and then it says the reduction potential of this is actually negative 1.6. 6, 6, right? So, okay, so let's write this, okay. Getting three electrons and becoming interesting, what's going on? Okay, and then becoming AL. Okay, the reduction potential is negative 1.66 volt okay and then the reduction potential of this is 0.77 right so fe3 plus okay and then that is actually the species is going to become your product okay fe2 plus therefore this is actually one electron okay so the reduction potential is 0.77 volt okay and then you also know the concentration of Fe2 plus equals to 1m. Fe3 plus equals to 0.1m. And then Al3 plus equals to 0.1m. Okay, so first thing first, okay, you got actually a lot of information here, and then you want to actually know what the E cell is. 
Okay, so let's start from the first clue, right? You have a vortex cell. Okay, then you need to decide, okay, which one you need to actually flip. So let, when you add up your oxidation potential and the reduction potential, it gives you a positive value, right? So apparently, this is actually the one that's actually the dominant factor, right? It has to be positive. So like when you add, in, when you add up these two, you're going to have a positive uh, cell potential, right? Positive E not cell, okay? So I'm going to flip these things. So that I have AL. It becomes AL3 plus, plus three electrons. Okay, and then I can write my E not oxidation. It's going to equal to positive 1.66 volt, right? And then I'm going to put the other one as it is. So that I can have the E not reduction potential equals 2.77 volt. Okay, so these two, so this section my Laura, this section my Jira, right? So when adding up, okay, uh, you can see one is actually giving off three electrons, one only receiving one, right? So to actually balance those things, I need to actually multiply three. For my second equations, right? So three Fe2 plus plus three electrons. I give you three Fe2 plus. Okay. One very important thing that you should know is that your reduction potential is a intensive property. Okay. So even though you multiply the coefficient on your equation, these things doesn't change. Okay. It doesn't change. So please don't multiply three for your E naught. Okay. So once you have all these things balanced out, then you add it up, right? So you're going to have AL plus 3FE3 plus, okay, three electron, three electron will cancel out. Let's going to give you AL3 plus plus 3FE2 plus, okay, and then your E not cell will simply equal to the sum of the two, which is 1.66 plus 0.77 so that you know your E not cell is going to be equal to 2.43 volt. Okay, so let's actually first step that we need to know. Okay, so your E not cell is actually 2.43 volt. All right. So once we have this, then the next thing is that, okay, we want to actually use all these informations, right? So you have a tons of information here, okay? But here is actually a very clear, clear hint, okay? Because it starts to provide the information of each individual species in your reactions, right? So the AL, of course, this is actually a solid, right? So you won't actually get into your chemical quotient, right? So once you see this, all this information is remixed to ask you to calculate the, uh, the chemical quotient Q, right? So for this specific reaction, the Q can be computed using your AL3 plus times your Fe2 plus the power over your Fe3 plus to the Q, right? So what you will need to do is actually dump in all this information. Okay, so you are going to have 0.1 times 1 to the cube divided by 0.1 to the cube. Okay, so once you do that, then you can compute that your Q is going to equal to 100. Okay. So the only equation that can actually connect your E not cell and then your Q is that your E cell is going to equal to your E not cell minus, okay, make sure you know it's minus, okay, one over N times 0 0.025693 times your natural log Q, 
Okay. So since now you know what the Q is, right? You know what the E not cell is. You also know what is the N is, right? You have three electron transfer, okay? So all of things now is actually all known. Okay, so you just plug it in and then get those uh, numbers. Okay, so your E not cell is actually 2.43. Negative one over the number of electrons that you have is three, right? Times 0 .00, 0 0.0, 0 25693 times your natural log Q. Q is 100. Okay, so once you do the like calculations, you're going to get a value of. So this whole term is 2.43 minus 0 0.039. So your E cell is going to equal to 2.39. Okay, so this is actually how you solve these uh, specific questions. Okay, so what we cover today is actually to tell you what is the general structures of an electrochemical cell, specifically the galvanic cell or the voltaic cells. Okay, we tell you what is actually the basic component, how to write the uh, cell notations. Okay, and then after that, we tell you how to actually connect the E cell or E not, we connect, e, connect sorry, the E not cell, how it connect to the equilibrium constant K, how the E cell can be connected to the uh, chemical quotient Q. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll stop here and then we'll continue the discussion in the, in the next time. All right, thank you and see you next time.